Who's that stud? <laughs> I said, Dr. Japan. Look, I, I got ran out of clothes, so I had to put on my brother's souvenir T-shirts today. It was the last bit of thing, clean wear. I've had a bit of a <laughs> grueling return from Japan, John. But good to see you, mate. You're smiling, and I know you've got a ton of intel. You've been blowing up my phone for days. Yeah, sorry about that, and I hope you're no, getting... No jet lag from uh, getting back off your jet lag from that flying yeah i had i had to come back through i went through tokyo beijing <clears throat> beijing paris paris spain and then i couldn't get back to my home airport so i had to take another one and then you know get another few train journeys so but i feel pretty good john you know when i was younger when i was a younger man and i was more of a drinking man i noticed this thing about myself when i get about three hours sleep it makes me feel like I've had a full eight or 10 hours and I can do that three hours, take a nap, but I haven't had a nap today, but um, I feel pretty good. You know, my brain is firing on all 12 cylinders. I don't like V8s. I prefer V12. There you go. <laughs> that works. I'm feeling good. I'm excited to know what you're going to share because <clears throat> there's been a lot going on. I know you're on top of this Middle Eastern political, especially from, um, from Sudani, and then we've got Iran, we've got Iraq, we've got the Israelis, we've got the Palestinians. I mean, everyone's just making their own form of, uh, this is my favorite cocktail and chucking it over the wall at the moment. I'm talking about Molotov cocktails, John, not right. the type that we enjoy at a, a nice um, evening event. But I'm going to let you kick it off and see where this goes, because I know you've got a ton of intel, so let's let's rock and roll, mate. All right, man. It's good to have you back. Uh, <clears throat> I, I told the audience that we were anticipating you having you last week, but the uh, Japan trip was just too prohibitive. So we're it's here today. Six, 16 hours time difference. It's yeah, like, it's... I'm already jet lagged. If I was living there, you could do it. You could get up in the morning, but it's your brain is fried. You know, I just couldn't no, do it's, it. But it's I didn't not... do any recording while I was there. It's not solvable doing that kind of a <clears throat> time difference, but it works out better today anyway, because number one of that, and number two, today is the first day of BRICS, so we're very yeah. excited about that. And um, I'm going to have you, after I do this, talk about what I sent you on the phone. We'll be able to get to that as a backup. Um, yeah. The first thing I want to show you is pretty cool. Uh, the team and I have been going over this last couple of days. I saved it just for you. And yeah. so I'm going to share the screen. This, this is off of a, what is it, USA Network, I think. I don't watch TV anymore, So, but somebody said it's a USA series. I'm sure it's going to get streamed on Hulu or Amazon or something of that along those lines. Yeah. But this is very telling, David, of Nasara. And we know they do predictive programming on the television. So this yeah. came on. I wanted to bring this to you in the audience attention, respectively. So take a look at this. This is the scene, and I'll, uh, I'll wait till you can see it. Can you see what I'm looking at now? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to mute my mic in case there's any feedback from this. Um, okay. I think I've seen this. So let's play it, John. So there's these two women talking, and it's an Asara com. And I'll just let it play. You'll see. Hopefully, everybody can hear it. But here it goes. Yeah. Pretty epic, right? Yeah, and there's a very poignant, important sentence: the greatest redistribution of wealth that in you know in in human history. Mm -hmm. And basically, that's exactly what Nasara and Tashara is all about: is returning the wealth to the people that have had it stolen from them. So, I mean, wouldn't you love to see that happen sooner rather than later, John? Um, what account did she say at the start of that video? Have you watched it a few times? I I, I couldn't watch it a couple get. of. I watched it a couple of times. I, they didn't allude to it, but it's, it reminds me a lot of the XRP or the network. It sounds like the QFS system, you know, and they can't hack it back because it's open transparency with digital ledger technology. And I'll tie in, David, what happened with President Trump over the weekend in Pennsylvania with the McDonald's thing. Yeah. We think that two things happened, two comms. He was calling out McDonald's for their cannibalism because he's putting a spotlight on them. And two, he was giving away stuff. So you tie that to this movie, we, he's going to be giving out checks to the people. That's what we've seen in the spirit coming. I wasn't sure if that was a, a real event. So he was a behind the driveway counter serving food, was he? Mm -hmm. That what he was doing? That looked we like that, we don't know if that's the real Trump, but certainly one of them was doing it. Yeah. Yeah, they said something at the start of the video saying this has gone into their special account. Like a, um, it sounded like a, um, 
it wasn't CBDC, but it sounded like oh. something crypto electronic. Crypto. Yeah. 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 But that that's exactly what we we're waiting to happen to redistribute the wealth that the um that the cabal have stolen from all of our generations going back, you know, at least through 10 generations have been doing this. At least. At least. Well, wicked being later for the righteous, brother, like we've talked about. There's, there, but what they're telling you is predictive programming in in the mainstream society. They're telling you what's coming. It's just yeah. you catch the comms or not. And obviously you and I and many others do, and that's why we're here. So, Yeah, I get it. And you know what? Things are becoming more and more like that because if we look back at four years ago, the content that was um, showing up on streaming entertainment television wise such as netflix and hulu um i watch i i'm always scanning about and looking at it but there's lots there's a lot less of what they were trying to throw at us such as rainbow flags and transgenderism mm. and accept these people and now there's the stories and shows like this coming out saying the greatest distribution of wealth in human history and yep. this was something that they always this was the the tagline from Nasara Jasara. So maybe some of the other information can indicate how close we're getting, John, that you're going to share tonight. Yeah. And before I get into some more, which I'll show you, thanks for sharing the video on your side to make it easier for everybody. I appreciate the save. Sure, as, as usual, brother. Uh, good assist. <laughs> um, little, th not little things, lots of like micro fractions of, of things happening, like uh, the, the singer from One Direction uh, that just died, fell over a balcony. Hmm. That's like Another the third one. or fourth time we've heard that from other people. We just reported on our, on our telegram today that it's because he was going to be the next person to leak out the music industry. So they're doing yeah, that. I, Go ahead. I, I saw it. One Direction was the band, wasn't it? He was in. Was that it? Yeah, I saw that flashing up an X while I was away and I said, oh, come on, man. Do people really still believe, you know, that yeah. a grown a grown man also in good physical condition, it looked like, can just fall out of a window you know, by accident. Yeah. I mean, where was he? Was he Palm Springs or somewhere? Where did it say it happened? I think it was overseas, if I remember right. Oh, it's true. It was in Europe, like Hungary or somewhere weird, something wasn't it? Like, yeah, something like that. And then you had, today was reported, the uh, ex-CEO of Abercrombie and Finch arrested for sex trafficking. So that oh. that theme is becoming more and more prevalent because, see, we're in the end codes, right? Where the cabal end codes, where they have to tell you we're at the ending of the old season, David. We're changing the guard right now. So... Pretty cool. Abercrombie and Finch, really. I mean, that must be code word for something because that's yeah. a company that's been around for quite a long time. I mean, oh sure, I, I, yeah. I mean, they've dressed half of America wears that stuff. So, you know, the and did you say the CEO? The CEO has been charged. Ex CEO, the ex CEO. Ex -CEO. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's another thing they've all been doing. John is jumping ship. I've noticed. Yep. If you talk, of, if we go back through. Um, I bumped into a New Zealand couple on the flight coming back and I was saying how bad Jacinta Arden is uh, or was during COVID and then how much money she made during those days she was in um, office. And these people knew it straight away. They said, yeah, yeah, this is the figures that she's got. So a lot of these people that were in power a couple of years ago think that they can just, okay, I'm not the CEO anymore. I'll just take a step back. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of this has been bubbling for a while. They know that their end of days is coming because of exposure and other people that they're involved with and the feds or whoever's investigating, probably the military, you can't trust the FBI at the moment, um, will be putting the squeeze on these people and they'll be screaming out names and information. So it doesn't surprise me. And I would say there's going to be a hell of a lot more. I'm just waiting for this. Oh, we yeah. still haven't had that. The, the first arrest will be a shocker, but I'm a big believer in the next couple of weeks before we get up to the election, John, there is going to have to be an event that's going to make people go, whoa, like, holy shit, what is that? Just right. to get even more people to awaken from that CNN slumber on their lazy boys and the Doritos. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Let's see what else you've got. But that's a great piece of intel. That video shows a lot and tells a lot, as they we know they have to disclose it. And yep. then also that um, there's other bits and pieces going on. The Trump thing was interesting. I did see that. So, yeah, what's going on in the Middle East? Is that where you're going to go next? No, I'm going to finish with Nassar because there's another good video that I'll show you about that. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're, we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg. Remember, the X-22 has been reporting, Dave, for quite some time. I don't know if you're aware that yeah. you know, first arrest would shock the world. Um, yeah. It was discussed on, and we don't, it, it could happen this date. It could happen differently. 
this is what he's reporting and he's been more right than not uh more accurate um that uh october 30th is when uh hillary is supposed to be her double will be arrested hillary you want he's on hillary being um arrested yeah yeah that's what we're being told is the next thing to watch as far as like the big wake up call you know because they're going to just right before the election going to continue to wake people up till the end sure well let me sh- Oh, yeah. Queue up the next video, John. And what you might have done on that one is when you go to share, if you see on the, the right-hand side, you'll see us. And then underneath it, there's a little tick box saying share sound. Ah, uh, okay. My apologies. Let me... Yeah, yeah. It's a, I, I do it all the time, buddy. I've done hundreds uh, of thousands of these. Let me go to the next one. Click on that and you, we should... Let me stop this. My apologies, guys. Let me get this together. Okay. Now you said to go to the... Yep. Uh, and when you click, you, can you see there's a little box when you go, when you click share on share the right hand side, it says share sound. Yes, I see it. Okay. Right. Let's, let's, let's help try that. One. Let's see. If there, thank you for the assist. Okay, here we go. Don't so this worry. other Nassara con that I thought that I, I caught the other day, I thought was quite interesting. And it's talking more about the QFS system being here and now, and, you know, part of Nassara, how they're going to roll this out, which complements the previous video. So here we go. You guys out there think this is a joke? There is no more Federal Reserve note on the U.S. debt clock. It is now the U.S. Treasury dollar. QFS is in place. Let me show you. This is essentially the bill. This is on Congress.gov. I'm going to show you guys. This is HR 6227. Look it up. This bill directs the president to implement a national quantum initi- initiative program. Amongst all things, establish the goals and priorities to pl- for a plan to accelerate the development of quantum information science and technology applications. Quantum information science and the use of laws. Quantum physics for storage, transmission, manipulation or measurement of information. What does this all mean? Let me put it in layman's stern. Basically what it means is the monetary debt system is going to put an end to the financial slavery and control over the populace. The QFS is an advanced financial system launched to eradicate monopoly on a monetary system for that purpose. The system compromised of artificial intelligence and complex computer programs fully backed by banks as needed. Quantum financial system would be a breakthrough in the world of banking which will lead to a new era of banking. QFS will not be influenced by government policies rather than be entirely backed by tangible assets like gold, platinum, silver and will not be based upon mere piece of paper which has no evidentiary value national quantum initiative act here it is run a congress up hr 6227 national quantum initiative act you guys go on qfs live you can read all these articles these articles are really important you can see like talking about the bricks common currency bricks to create further payment mechanisms precious metals is moving forward etc i don't tell you guys this to scare you but the quantum financial system is in effect it's 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 already in effect it's going through the banks are shutting down silicon valley bank started it now the dominoes are going to fall 187 banks are, are said to be wiped out they don't have the assets they don't have the gold when you go and you put in your money in they don't have the gold to back your money. So what they're doing is they're taking out loans from other bigger banks. And these these bigger banks cannot loan them the money because they don't have the actual gold or the, or the silver or the platinum. There's no monetary value that are backing cash. Cash is going to be gone. Cash is not king anymore, guys. It's going to be digital assets. And to be exact, these are some of those digital assets. You got XRP Ripple, XLM Stellar, Zenfin. You have IOTA. You have Algorand. You have gold. You have silver. I say this, you guys are prepared. Quantum financial system is in effect. The Sarah just Sarah. Go on QFS.live, go on Congress.org. Trust me, this is in effect. You, you're not going to be able to get your money out of, the, out of the banks. Silicon Valley started it. That bank fell. It started the domino effect. Dominoes are falling. All the other banks are going to follow. Get ready for the digital dollar. Very interesting that the... Um... Talking about the digital, you know, I was just checking some figures while we were watching that, John, about what's going on. Gold has really rallied. Have you seen that? How much that's gone up? It's gone up. Your microphone's off, is it? No, I don't. I don't hear you anymore. Okay, is that is that better? Twenty seven. Yeah. Sorry, I muted my mic. Twenty seven fifty six. I think is last I checked, and silver's almost at thirty. It's approaching thirty five dollars right now. Yeah, gold's rallied. That's in, very interesting. I'm just looking at that. What's going to continue um, XRP, to? XRP is about the same, but I think that's artificial. People are they're trying to keep the attention that's, off that. Well, keep there's a going. counter. There's a counter. Uh, there, there's a counter. Um, what do you call it? Um, counter claim, or, or basically, a, a, because you know SEC is trying to hold them down. Basically, they're, the, the SEC knows they're going to lose. They're just doing this to delay 
the wealth of that. But what's interesting is XRP is already working with the BRICS. Remember I showed you uh, uh, India bought a ton of oil from China for the petrol you want yeah. using XRP. So they're working with some Asian country who escapes me. I, I want to say Singapore, but I'm, I could be wrong, but it's, it's in an Asian province. And XRP was already up way higher than what it's posted. So a lot of this stuff is being sort of suppressed to roll out at a specific time. Um, I still think we're going to be able to use, as BRICS starts to de-dollarize this week, whether they say it or not, and they nationalize their currencies, which we know is the reset, we will still have the dollar, but it's just going to continue to lose value more and more and more in the index. Because as the dollar index goes down, the foreign currency markets go up, which is what we want for this, right? And the dollar's not worth anything anyway. It hasn't been for years, as you would say. But you have to still transition You know, people. Uh, elderly population is still going to need some cash hand. This People like us and younger are, are accustomed to cryptos and will know how to navigate it. But the good news is that it's actually going to be back, not pegged, but gold and silver backed, real physical money. That's what Basel III is all about. What he was talking about, the banks, if they're not Basel III compliant, they're out of here. So in the old days, our grandparents would take a check, cash it, and they could get it in money, dollars, or they could get it in physical gold and silver. Ostensibly, yeah, yeah. it will work, we think, the same way, except it'll be now they'll get you know, physical or digital gold that they can convert, you know, into a wallet or some other place outside the banking system, which will make us our own central banks. And we will ostensibly, David, do peer-to-peer -peer banking. So in the future, if I want to hire you to do some consulting for me or vice versa, I would just pay you an XRP or XLM or, or Shiba or some, any other mechanism we want. And it's just, it's like Venmo and Zelle without the middleman. Easiest way to think of it. Mm -hmm. So let me the only, uh, thing about that, the only thing about that is the fluctuation in value if you if you're tagging it against currencies. But if we do away with currencies like paper currencies, right. whether it's the euro, the dollar, the pound, if we're trading in XRP, that will have a certain value in our country and we'll, we'll know about it. Say, okay, it's 10 XRP for a loaf of bread, for example. Well, so, XRP will be backed in gold and gold will be the stabilizer to avoid the fluctuation because we'll yeah, be exactly. moving the third and final private Western Central Bank. That's what Trump is doing. That's why he had Andrew Jackson on the left side of his wall in the White House, because Jackson was the second one to move the central bank. He will be the third. Oh, it all makes sense. All these comms coming out now. They're clever how they, they place things around. Um, so what are we going to advise people to do about that? Because I know we're going to get slammed with emails saying, well, what shall I do? Should I take my money out of the bank? And I mean, we've said this from the start. We're not financial experts, but what we can do is indicate based on what we've been reading and, and absorbing how we would handle our funds. And I think that's the, the easiest way to do it for my side of things. I've got XRP. I've got a few other bits of crypto, but most of my savings would still be in fiat currency, which would be euros or pounds. Um, Mind if I take a crack at that? Yeah, absolutely, mate. So I'm not, a, I'm not a financial advisor. It's not constituted, like you said, as financial advice. We're just giving you good information that you can use for your own discernmental authority and ability, which you all know we have to use that disclaimer. Okay. That being said, I can tell you folks what I'm doing, which is diversifying. Becoming your own central bank means that. Having your own physical gold and silver. Having the right foreign currencies. Having the right bonds, like Zimbabwe. Having um, the right cryptos, which is asset backed stuff like, which will be asset backed like XRP, XLM, XDC, um, Algorand's another good one, Shiba Inu, we've talked about. Interesting with Shiba is Satoshi Kazama is stepping down, another Cabal code comp, stepping down the end of this year. And we're seeing Shiba is probably by January 1 is really going to start to break out into a positive position. So do with that what you will as part of advice. As far as banks go, try to get out of the majors and stay in credit unions if you can. And just have a diversification. I, I like to have at least five bank accounts. And this way it's spread out. You're not spread too thin in any one direction. Um, I don't like JP Morgan because I just finished a book here that I recommend everybody read. It's called The uh, Creature of Jekyll Island. This is like war and peace for the financial world. It, it's just, it's a, close to uh, 600 pages. And it's, um, it's even though I know this stuff well, it, it still gave me a headache realizing how much they've shafted our generations and that we can never let that happen again. But, you know, it all ties back to the Rothschilds and JP Morgan. They, they started this whole thing here in America in the last hundred years. Well, let me share something with the sure. audience that's happened the last couple of days. Well, 
about a week ago, I'm used to having my accounts frozen, John, mm. because what happens is they'll say, um, everything is peachy at the start. And then something will happen. They'll say, well, we don't like this. And what's this about? So basically, I made a transaction. Um, it was just to pay some supplier of mine. And they didn't like the country it was going to. So they said, well, what's the story? You send us the invoice. I said, no. They said, well, what are you talking about? No. I said, no. The person on that invoice that I do business with has no connection to you. So I cannot send you the invoice with their details on it because that you're asking me to break the law, which is the Privacy Act of 2018. The banks ignore this to say, well, if you don't do it, we're going to freeze your accounts. I say, go ahead, freeze them. So sure enough, and it wasn't just one. Then they, they started getting arsy, you see. They sent me about 15 different requests for stuff that's impossible for me to give them. And I said, tell you what, guys, you're not the police. You're not a financial um, investigation squad. You're a bank. And you now got so uppity that you think that we need you where you're not the last cold Coca-Cola on the beach on a summer's day. So I'm going to say no. I'm not going to give you any information. My private affairs of who I do business, what, why, where, and when are none of your business. It's private. Hence, they pass the act. And here's the trick, folks. If this happens to you and they freeze your accounts, what you will, you'll get warning signs. Too many letters. Explain this. Why did you spend $300 there? What, what, why are you, where are you going on that flight ticket you bought for 150 bucks? Why are you going to Columbia? They'll start doing things like this. These are your warning signs to move the money out of that bank somewhere else. So I wow. got distracted and take, took no notice. So they froze my account. I said, right, I want to close my account. I'm not going to give you any information. And here's the forwarding details. As soon as you give them, the only criteria is whatever's on the name of the account that you use, you've got to have exactly the same name. So it's a business account can be difficult if it's a personal account no problem you're always going to have that and they cannot hold on to your money they have to send it to you but one of the banks i set up and this is where all this long ramble came from one of the banks i set up was a um lithuanian bank i was like oh god okay let's just let's just clear it because i know they're gonna they're gonna have problems for me and when they opened the account which is an online account the host of the banking is all JP Morgan. Mm -hmm. So the main mm -hmm. one, JP Morgan, and then there's a secondary account for a different currency. That's in Chase Bank. And even the, the transaction codes are all in Chase. So Chase Bank, JP Morgan Investments, I'm like, oh my goodness, i got to get rid of this one now. And after all that opening and bothering, as soon as I saw that, my alarm bells went off everywhere, buddy. So you got to watch who you actually are banking with. You know, let's just take Wells Fargo. Who really owns it? What's going on? I know you. You. We've always talked about Wells Fargo being mm -hmm. um, one of the good guys with the transitioning of their offices into wealth management offices instead of the counters. I wouldn't say they're one of the good guys or one of the. They're the best of the worst of the tier ones. Yeah, because they have they have you know they just they just bucked a lawsuit, which doesn't mean and they necessarily were in the right. But I, my maintain what I maintain and my own personal belief is, like I guess, at best of the worst, they're one of the main tier fours, tier one banks that will survive because of the wealth transfer through the reset, because they were the flagship bank for the currencies. That's going to yeah. be the bread and butter with the uh, basis point, right? So every time we go to exchange, whether it's one time or ten times, it's a one basis point transaction, which is a hundred close to a hundred thousand US for transaction. So it's in their best interest to work with you and stick around. That said, I will give, see, we have a bit of an unfair advantage here, David, in America, as opposed to the rest of the world, because we have the constitution, we have guns, we have a certain amount of rights that we're, we're resting back from the corporation, right? Yeah. That's what part of all this great movement we're talking about is, is constituting. So a great bank that I've enjoyed personally, if anybody's interested, is Old Glory Bank out of Oklahoma. It's started by John Rich and Dr. Ben Carson and also Larry Elder who are all conservative constitutionalists, and uh, they are really about protecting free speech and your constitu constitutional right. Obviously, I would presume that that favors more to the right than left, but that would be to be expected. But the point is, you know, you have a lot more freedoms with that bank than you do with 
any of the majors. And then I'm going tomorrow on my day off to one of my rare days off to a bank here that is got a prominent location in Tennessee where, you know, I'm headed, but they also have a branch here, Farmers and Merchants. It's owned primarily by the, the farmers, which we know Trump and Masara and Sara support. Uh, you also saw that, by the way, with Nelson Chamisa on the, the, one of the pictures I sent, one of the posts I sent you, yeah. that he supported yeah. the farmers. The countries copy each other. So uh, the farmers mostly own it. They're not CBDC. They're not Fed now. They have a very low uh, debt ceiling right now. If they're low in debt now, it means it's going to be even better later. So that's a bank that I'm entertaining uh, because it's, a, it's technically a credit union for the farmers. And uh, so I have a keen interest in doing that. So that's a way that we can pivot away from post RV from the major banks. Now, let me show you one other um, video here. I pray I can get to this here. Let me get out of this. Forgive me one second, folks. I got to get out of that screen and get to here. And uh, let me, I'm sorry. This thing has taken, taken a few twists and turns here. I, I've got it. <laughs> Live TV. Yeah, it, here we go. I'm queuing it up now. Let me make sure that I've, uh, uh, let me pause this and make sure that you, I, the sound is still good. Share sound, uh, stereo, we'll give you a bit of stereo. Let me know if you can hear this. This, this was last week. Some of, some of you have seen this on, on other videos I've done, but I'm doing this for your, your audience as well, David. Here's what's interesting. This was last week before this week's Sum of the Bricks. This is the central bank governor of, our, of Iran very timely right now with what's going on in the world. And, and basically he's saying that they have a great agreement in place to diplomatically to de-dollarize and to nationalize, that's a key word, other currencies in the BRICS block. What's one of those currencies? The dinar. Yeah. What's another one? The real, the toman, his, right? Because they got sanctions on five it. Five or six, you're going to have the Venezuelan Boulevard. You got, you got the Vietnamese Thai Dong, bots. Thai Bot. There's yeah. a ton of them. North and South Korean won once they yeah. merge. That'll be another good one we talked about. So I just want the audience to see this. So here we go. Well, John, you're showing a Zoom page. So you've got the wrong page showing on my side. Oh, you want to you want to you want to show this one? No, no. What just just push stop share. Oh, I see. Okay. What you've done, and then go back in and reselect it because you had it up there before and then you it's oh, easy. Oh, I see. Sorry about that. Okay. Let me uh Get to that and we'll there you go. Perfect. Got it. Let's have a listen. Apologies, folks. Thanks for being patient. Appreciate the support. <laughs> okay, so here's the video and um, here's what he's talking about. In the BRICS meetings, there were very good agreements made regarding the financial and monetary sphere. Iran made good agreements with the Central Bank of Russia during the period when they were the secretary of BRICS, and we had good agreements regarding the connection of card networks and monetary and financial cooperation, all of which we have raised in the BRICS. For example, today in the BRICS, the issue of paying for the transactions with local currency is one of the issues, and a very good agreement has been reached. Good agreements regarding global reserve payments and the use of bonds for payment were also made. We now have a global financial system based mostly on the IMF, the World Bank, and Western countries. Unfortunately, due to the political interactions with those countries, today the world is considering other arrangements. Definitely within the BRICS group of countries, such arrangements will be made between the member states. We have a payment system between countries based on local currencies. That was one of the topics of this meeting. China, Russia, and Iran are very interested in it. We have moved towards being able to conduct transactions with other countries in local currencies and reduce the role of the U.S. dollar in international transactions. Russia has also made good progress. I think the BRICS countries have developed well and will definitely develop in the future. The new development bank, created by BRICS, can pursue many of the development goals of the BRICS member countries. Because today, the World Bank operates within the framework of the goals of the United States and Western countries. We hope that NDB will play this role for the BRICS member countries, and we want to become a member of NDB. Okay, so that's uh, that's the genesis, David, of of the overall tenor of the message. So let's let's now segue to what's going on now. They're meeting in BRICS through Thursday. Iraq is in a really good place. They have a new Speaker of the House. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right, Al Mugadashi. I know I'm in the ballpark somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
the Middle Easterners watching will probably know exactly what I mean and be able to translate that. But um, he is a non-corrupt, non-Iranian proxy. He's a Iraqi. So they're getting ready to put him into parliament. Um, we're also watching for the project to delete three zeros in the oil and gas law that we've been widely anticipated for quite some time to get in there. We suspect that Maliki is going to pop his ugly face out like a whack-a-mole as soon as that comes out. Because every time they try to pass that gas law, that's what happens. The Kurds block has selected a primarily a Democratic party for the election that they're going with, which is neither here nor there. It just has the largest amount of block to win the majority ostensibly. So that's going to come into play once that gets into parliament. You know, what's interesting, I sent this to you, and I apologize, folks, I don't have time to get it up here today, but you can share with your audience later. Um, somebody in the White House in the deep state leaked the Israeli plans. They were going to hit the power plants October 16th. That got thwarted because of that little initiative they just tried, a little agenda. So what we think is going to happen is, is we're watching to see after said events happen in Iraq with the prime minister, excuse me, with the speaker of the house and the oil and gas law and Maliki, it's just a matter of time before Israel does what they're going to do. Now, people are concerned. I've seen this comment, so I want to squelch it right now. People are like, well, John, if they're, if they're saying they're going to do it, isn't that a bad thing? No, because ordinarily in or old warfare, right, David, you don't telegraph what you're going to do. Oh. The fact that they are means it's not World War III and that this whole thing is a narrative script that Israel is doing their part per you know, Kim Clement's prophetic word that they're going to come out and hit the power plants. So we think somewhere between after the events this week and leading up to the election of President Trump winning, they're going to do it. And then on the backs of that, we're going to be watching closely the next time we're on again, China, Taiwan, because you heard Xi came out and said, I think a day or two ago, he's got China prepped and ready for war. Now, again, if you're going to do that, you wouldn't say it. But we're watching Ukraine. We've talked about this before for Putin to finish up that nonsense go right into China, Taiwan for a couple of days, at which point you have lots of distractions over here. You don't see what Iraq's doing behind the scenes to, to return to the national stage. Yeah. Um, and again, you have to understand how devious Israel, uh, Israeli intelligence are. Uh, let me reword that. They're extremely clever. I mean, what Stop happened with that. these... Yeah, Mossad, yeah. The, the, what happened with these walkie-talkies and pages? I mean, if you look at if you look at the background of that particular event, how Israel set it up, they bought a company, they then got manufactured some goods, and they managed to get those goods into areas where they knew they were going to sell them. They set up fake reviews from hundreds of people, and they hid the explosives inside the power cells, so inside the batteries. So these pages... And electronic devices would have been on airplanes for sure. You cannot detect them. Now, I was, I was surprised that apart from doctors and hospitals still using pages, but their plan is ingenious. And for them to say, okay, this is what we're going to do next is actually ridiculous considering the amount of intelligence that this group has, Mossad, and the entire nation. But what we do know is that it is something that needs to be sorted out. Um, Trump's been a little bit speechy on it, but I thought it was an interesting uh, meeting that Zelensky actually asked to sit down with Trump. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Why would that little green dress, <laughs> dress weirdo, what a, you know, yeah, bad actor. Yeah, really. Please well, give us another 30 billion. It's just 30 <laughs> billion. I'll so, tell you what, I'll give you $5. That's what you're worth to me. I'm just saying. <laughs> you <laughs> do that. You do that well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, totally. You got Trump also egging on Brick saying, oh, if you do it, I'm going to put tariffs on you. That's reverse psychology saying, go do it. Right. Or, hey, we should bomb Iran. You know, it's going to look like, you know, it, it's it's moves and counter moves, this whole thing. I mean, with the other thing that you can't, we, the value of the paper dollar is what we're talking about as well. Right. They haven't got the power behind all the multi-trillion dollar oil purchases now because um, Saudi Arabia rejected that re-signing of the contract. We now got all the BRIC nations that they can actually do the transactions in local currency backed by gold so they know that it has value. It's like saying, okay, I'll swap this for this. But paper-backed um, fiat currency is just not where it's going to go because 
you know, take Europe, for example, you know, Germany, like Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, Greece, all of these countries that are struggling owe billions to the EU. And mm -hmm. for example, Italy and Spain, Italy owes Spain 25 and Spain owes Italy 18 or something. So, well, you give us the 25 and then we'll give you change back. It's like going into a store negotiating. When both of them are bullshitting, they both don't have it. And Germany's been carrying the rope because of their economic mites, and such as through the car industry. Um, so it's a whole house of cards that are all, it's going to have to come crashing down because nobody has any confidence in long term in this. They all sit there and pat each other on the back and reassure each other. But you've got to, you've got to think the only thing that's going to be of any value is things that have value, such as gold and silver and platinum. And it's got to go crypto. It's got to go crypto. It's got to go not necessarily Bitcoin for our novices there, but all of the other ones that you've actually talked about. It's the only way forward, you know, because all of a sudden your paper value, your paper money is valueless, but okay. I, I bought, luckily for me, I bought something that's a commodity, something that's always in high demand and high value. Mm -hmm. So, all the market signs are getting closer and closer and closer. And as we get up to the election, it's just a matter of what are they going to try to distract us with next before we get there? Well, here's the thing, David. That's what you just said is the perfect backdrop and thesis for BRICS. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not getting close. We're there. They're going to whether it's just a question of whether they announce it this week or they just tacitly quietly do it. They really don't have to announce it because they already kind of did it at the UN General Assembly last month of September. They did it individually. Now they're collectively meeting. But what they're doing is settling up in trade and commerce on real-time assets. Like you said, something real for something real. They have roughly 40% yeah. gold-backed Russian Chinese bonds, which are ostensibly gold tools. Tremendous value. And they're just going to peg that and back it with all these. They're going to offer the unit, meaning Putin primarily will offer the unit to all these countries. It's optional, but it's a way more attractive option than the U.S. dollar. And of course, it's going to be so good, you're going to look foolish to say, no, no, I'd rather stay with the dollar enslaving me and money laundering and forcing me to. So it's, it's, it's really a very good, clever way to facilitate the reset and also puts pressure on the U.S. to gold back the dollar going forward because it, otherwise we're left out in the cold here. Yeah, you can't afford that. You can't no. afford that. So no. the bricks, the bricks all getting together and making it. I think it's an even playing field now. And that was exactly. also something I talked about. Even yeah. playing field when you know yep. your Chinese uh, currency and crypto is worth this against the gold. Okay, yeah, that's okay. We keep it like that. And if mm -hmm. everybody's price on goes up, the gold goes up worldwide. Obviously, that'll adjust everybody else's because for one ounce of gold, this is the price, and this is how many is going to be in your currency. So makes sense to me, John. Makes sense. Well, let me just read a couple of little cliff notes here, David, that I sent you on your phone. IMF is losing its grip, which I don't know if they ever had it. I mean, you had Christine yeah. Lagarde, who was the head of the IMF now. She's the head of the European Central Bank, which oh, is like God. going from the frying pan to the fire, you know, living there. And you have yeah. George, Georgianne, whatever her last name is now, the IMF. They just, it's just incestuously switching. It's take your poison. Uh, you've got the Mossad commentary. IDF has begun its wave of attacks in Beirut. So what's going on is Israel is finishing up in Beirut. I think they're waiting for the signal to go into Iraq, Iran, which we discussed. And then this just came out like a half an hour ago, at least on my end, eliminating the so-called Hashem Safadien, head of the executive council of the terrorist Lebanon, Hezbollah. You also had Sudani mention today that eight key members of ISIS have been taken out. So they're cleaning shop, they're cleaning oh, they're, yeah, they're cleaning house. It's just spring cleaning before the big change comes because if exactly. you don't take out all of these fanatics that want to hang on to the old ways, well, and David, you know they're all corrupted, whether it's whatever vice they've got, whether it's young this or young that or an envelope, money doesn't always cut it. This is why all these other situations have gotten um, this bad on the planet because there's only so much money you can give a person and say, look, I've got everything I need now. What else you got? What else you got? Mm -hmm. I didn't mean so, I'm, so, I'm sorry. I got a little excited to say that, David, it's like, it's the timing is perfect. This thing was so perfectly orchestrated, like a chess match, right? It's got Trump written all over it. Drop this thing on, on the deep state 10 to 12 days before the election. And everybody's going to see it. And then what happens after the election, November 7th, this is key for you guys to know everybody. 
the uh, Fed is going, they've announced that they're going to drop the interest rates another 25 basis points. And then again in December, what's that do? That's a panic move. That's going to tank the dollar. It's going to lower the index. Perfect for the foreign currencies. Perfect for gold and silver to break out. And guess what else happens after Israel hits the power plants and the missile sites? The oil fields. Yeah. So we're going to see a pretty good spike in oil we've been anticipating for quite some time. But that all falls on the deep state's watch. And all before Trump comes back in optically, I also have a very exciting update, David, I know you're going to like, and I think everybody here will like, regarding med beds. So I called my buddy Jerry on our team, and he's got his friend, the Marine, the one that I told you about two years ago, had a friend go in his place because Marines take care of each other. I mean, all the military does, but especially Marines, Semper Fi, always faithful. So he gave his spot two years ago to his buddy here in California. And the Marine isn't in the best of health either, but that's just the humility that those guys are, that old guard's about. We called him and we said, hey, are we still going to go to Walter Reed or a military location to get a med bed? He said, no. Trump has been working with the military to place med beds in, I don't know if it's every hospital, but certainly a lot of hospitals throughout America, and I would imagine in the whole of Europe and the world as well. And they're waiting for his signal to roll them out to the public. And we don't know when that date's going to be, obviously, right? The best I can do is give you an educated guess. And I would think that would be probably once Trump's optically back in first quarter of next year. So yeah. it's on his watch. He's not going to give all the way that that lovely free stuff to people if he's not sitting in the White House because um, it wouldn't make sense to, to give it anything now. I don't think we, the only thing I'm predicting is, and I don't want it to happen, obviously. I'm predicting some event that's going to make people wake up even more before we go into it. But the amount of people are asking me, are we going to have an election? Are we not going to have an election? How are they going to do it? The simple, there's, there's too many variables, and the chances yeah. are we probably <laughs> even haven't considered the real manner in which this is all going to kick off because you could never anticipate such as exploding walkie-talkies and pages. Who would have predicted that? No. I mean, these guys are sneaky but ingenious, which is a dangerous enemy to have on, yeah. the, um, on this front. Well, that so, also goes back, David, to what you said was very important a minute ago about their cleaning house. That's part of the wealth of the wicked being laid up for the righteous. You cannot fund evil. I've seen people comment on that, and they're absolutely right. You've got to take the bad guys out and clear the dance floor of the corruption before you bring in the good stuff. So yeah. it's literally the, we're seeing optically what has already happened behind the scenes a while ago, the draining of the proverbial swamp for the people to see. Now, we don't know if there's going to be an election or not. We could have a case where we vote, military comes back in, and says, you know what, we're going to just do this again with paper ballots, same day voting. You know, there, there's so many ways this can go. We just have to watch and see. It's, you're exactly right. I can't really predict any more than what I would yeah. think or feel is going to happen. So yeah. how are we doing on, um, let's hit some of the other countries, John. Are you finished on Iraq? Is there anything else you need to talk about there? Um, no, I, I mean, there's we could go on for days with that, but I, that, that's the, the Reader's Digest of what I think people want to get. Uh, you know, Vietnam is just waiting for China, Taiwan, as I said that will free them enough. I don't, you know, not going to get 100% of, you know, communism out, but it'll get enough to extricate them out and free them up in silver, Litecoin, and many other things, gold that they've got. Vietnam, who is also at the BRICS, by the way. Just yeah. That up. And Zimbabwe, we're watching Chamisa closely. He's putting out a lot of comms. Um, my suspicion is that he's probably, he's also talking about the farmers, as I mentioned. I showed you that picture as well. Screenshot. Our suspicion is he'll probably come out in sometime first quarter, January-ish, once Trump is back in, he'll probably be put in, in power of that. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've, you've talked about the, the show that you watched where the guys were, uh, you know, going to Zimbabwe and digging gold under the ground. We, we know the virtues they've got. I think it's interesting that they turned down China. It's $300 million offer to mine metals if they want to mine it themselves. And they should. It's their, it's their goal. Absolutely. They, you know, that just gets funded. They'll, uh, they'll benefit the rewards from the not giving away that much to, um, to China, which is ultimately could still be their enemy. I mean, right. when I was, in, I, I was a little bit shocked actually, John, because when I got to Beijing the other day, nothing works. Your beautiful new airport, but none of your really? communications all work. They knock out your WhatsApp. They knock out the Facebook. They knock out the Instagram. You mm. can't, I couldn't even check if there was a parcel on its way to being delivered with me because they thought that was a suspicious website. The control and and, um, and intelligence that they're doing in China on the on the citizens makes me believe that there's 
maybe a bit more of a sinister plot than we anticipate coming out of there. But there's certainly people that know, again, know what they're doing. Um, they're blocking everything so you can't get all your updates. You're not allowed to wait. What, you, you can't even use a voice message on WhatsApp or text. Doesn't work. Dubai, for example, you can still get text messages. You're just not allowed to use the video and the voice calling. Okay. Well, I, I have something to say about that real quick, David. I'm inclined to agree with you. I, I, people have said to me, you know, well, what about for the Christian contingency? Do we trust China? Do we trust BRICS? Short-term, yes. Long-term, no. Um, I think we have a five-year, I've told you this before, I'm saying this again for posterity. I think we have a, from the end of this year into 2030-ish, we have about a five, six-year window of prosperity where we're good, which is why we encourage people to buy their own land, get off the grid and, and, and be safe, have safe havens. But we have the power to pray and rebuke this in, in, in Jesus' name with mighty war angels. We need to just take advantage of that as, as believers and rebuke it the prowl of prayer can push it away. But if we don't take advantage of that, then it's kind of like open season in the spirit realm. So that being said, um, we have a window of time where we can take advantage of these cryptos and things like that. That's why what I want to do, David, is is um, credit to uh, John Nego on Currency 365, because this was his idea many years ago. And, you know, I like to give credit where it's due. He said that we need to be investing in a godly internet. We do, because I think Google is only going to get stronger in power. They're going to continue to try to push this B system. So the more that we extricate ourselves away from it now and get ahead of it, like we're doing with the new cycles, the better off we'll be. Yeah, I agree with all of that. What else you got in your little notes list um, there? You know, just a little couple of cleanup items, you know, uh, North South Korean won, that's a currency we recommend. Once those two countries merge next year after their little war spat, uh, whatever yeah. that's gonna look like, who knows, um, that will be a great one to get. Thai bot we've talked about venezuela we need to be watching you know there's a lot of heat on maduro i know they're trying to get him out for potentially juan guaido which trump talked about years ago in the state of the union back in 2019 yeah. so that's going to be one to watch um i mean there's others but those are the main kind of front and center ones right now it all really starts with iraq and then will precipitate we think pretty quickly once they rip the proverbial band-aid off well i would tell i would tell people to be alert and vigil for um yeah for events that you would consider unusual <laughs> um it'd be nice to see i mean another possibility is them actually coming out and admitting it i mean texas this is what i'm saying things are changing john you know in in the states people are not believing this anymore the texas for example has declared um that it's not going to take the advice of central government and telling mm -hmm. them what to do with a gay community and a transgender community, they're like, no, and we're not going to just get into that here. You're not going to get all those automatic worshiping points you get from other states, just as like New York. So the the spat between Taiwan and China again has to take place as a bit of a, an in-house cleansing. Yeah. Um, I know if you look, I mean, I was flying over these countries, and in China, you could just see fast. I mean vast 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 acres of huge factories because the, the the manufacturing that they've got set up in japan is very interesting they they've set that up in a way that's going to protect them because their exports and imports and they're in the brick economy so they don't need permission to send a container ship somewhere else in the world just because the americans don't like it you mm -hmm. know the 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 deep state have been selling weapons I mean, if you go to a weapons show in Europe, it's all the major players, Germany, France, Belgium, and Spain, and or not Spain, uh, the UK, all exhibit the weapons of mass destruction. And yet they're still doing deals, you know? So it's about the business, isn't it? It's either speed it up or slow it down or, or, or throw in the towel. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. That's right, absolutely. But I mean, I think that's a pretty good kind of summation. Anything else that you want to weigh in? No, I'm watching carefully what's going on politically. Um, I mean, Trump's again; his rallies are just phenomenal. What they're doing. I mean, I've got mm -hmm. something I can I can share the audience very quickly. Just sure. the amount of people there and the backup that he's getting, the support he's getting on an emotional level, and um, you know, this isn't one of his rallies. This is a concert that Kid Rock, and the emotional feeling in this is is patriotism. 
we're all sick of it. We want our lives back. We want to have the respect um, from our kids. What they what they they're going to ask us? Okay, what's the rules and how do we do it? Um, where is it? Must be this one. Look at this. John, if you're a member of the cabal or if you're sitting in the White House, fake White House, currently you yeah. see those sort of figures and people all banding together in a brotherly love and sisterly love without mm -hmm. any rainbow flags around their shoulders and saying mm -hmm. we're, we're Americans, we're patriots. The yep. numbers that Trump has got coming out and in support like this, I plead with all that is sacred that they don't mess about with the real numbers again, like four years ago. I mean, it's nail-biting, <laughs> interesting stuff going on, isn't it? Well, I mean, that... re remember, David, they now have edicts, Trump has said, anybody who tries to cheat in the election will be arrested. And technically, by the constitutional standard, that's considered treason. So, yeah. you know, th this is all, as, you know, to this is part of the playbook to show everything. I was going to show you, I think I sent you this, Polymarket has him up 63.4% over whoever they are. And uh, whatever creature that is. And I think the numbers are actually a lot higher than that, to be honest with you. And I saw him over the weekend at a Steelers game. I think that 68,000 people there chanting USAU. You. I mean, you yeah. know, the people are the people need to stand up and, and rise up against as they always need to do against the establishment. There's more of us than them. We just need to keep fighting. I would just encourage everybody to if you haven't voted, get out and vote Trump. Get You know, it does make a difference, particularly this year. Absolutely. I was I was standing in in a line with three women my age, more or less, from Philadelphia. And I said, so are you excited about, you know, the election coming up? And they said, well, I wouldn't say excited, more nervous. I was like, why? So, well, you know, yeah, why? If, he gets back, if he gets back in. And then I said, look, I'm <laughs> going to be in this line for the next hour. I know because I can see. How uh... Do I get into it with them? So I was playing very soft. They got off very lightly. <laughs> I played very softly. Say, why? Why don't you like Trump? I don't understand. You know, tell me why. Why he's a racist? He's a rapist. He's a sexual deviant. He's oh, an offender. Wow. I'm like, yeah, girls, carry on. You know, they're from Philly. Carry on watching CNN. And then I said, well, I said ultimately it won't make much difference to me. Wink, wink. Who wins? But. When you see the amount of people that attend the rallies and the, how many the amount of people that get paid to go to Kamala, and yet she still can't fill even close to a stadium, and then she starts speaking with an Indian accent one day and then a Caribbean twinge mm -hmm. the next day, like this, you know, she's like, everything yeah. gonna be all right, I rear everything I rear, and then this <laughs> French guy, they they said that's not true, that's not what happened. And then this French guy piped up. He says, yes, it is. I have seen this, this ridiculous accent uh, changing from Guaman. <laughs> so I thought, oh, thanks, mate. You've really screwed me now because I'm going to get, you know, evil eye for the next hour, hour and a yeah. half. But the bottom line is there are actually people out there that still believe that it is the best option. Which... Sadly, the brainwashing. You know, you know what that sounds like, David? It sounds just like, your old pal Bell, let's let's put out there and say which way the wind blows. <laughs> you know, that's what it that's what it reminds me of. You, know? Said, you, know, you could still do that. I mean, Clinton, <laughs> Hillary, Hillary, as you say, being ruled out. I, I yeah, don't yeah. believe Hillary around John. And look how much bigger they made one ton of more prisoner. For who? Who's going down there? It's not turned into some uh, resort, is it? Is it now one ton of more? Um, the one-way spa. Yeah. Welcome to the One Way Spa. We've reserved a special cell for you with your own, um, for for a hang for a noose to go around your neck made out of silk. Push one for traditional <laughs> cowboy brutal rope burn. They're like the Roach Motels. They check in, but they don't check out. <laughs> yeah, the California Hotel, California. Yeah, exactly. What are we gonna, how are we going to end this then? Then what's the what's the biggest prediction you got coming up? Then make a call on something. I mean, you know, I predict it's not anything. I don't think anybody's gonna be shocked to buy, but I mean, I think Trump's <laughs> gonna win. Trump's gonna win in a red wave. Uh, I, 
I would surprise some people by saying, I think he's got a good chance of winning California, believe it or not. Yeah, I, I a think lot there's of Trump a few flags states. out here. Yeah, you know? I think that's good. I think there's a few states that he's going to surprise people. But I'm going to call some form of event that's going to be another, like whether it's more famous names and people from the Diddy case, mm -hmm. something like that being a more exposure, more, 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 more with sleepy Joe supporters are going to be shocked and say, oh, my God, I can't believe I've been duped, duped yep. into it. But it's really, uh, it, it's gone. We've been through some hellish times and some crazy intel and some bizarre yeah. stories, exploding pages and uh, crazy weather formations and, you know, sweeping across the states. It's going to be a cat five and then it's a cat <laughs> one when it lands. And there's some crazy stuff going on, but we only have a short window to see what's really going to happen next, because I think the next three weeks is going to be super interesting. We got one shot. We got to make it right. This isn't so much about a prediction is more of a, of a, Proclamation, I would say. Yeah. I want to caution our audiences about this. Even after he wins, it's it's over, but it's not over in the sense that there's still November and December. Until he's back optically, you're going to see interest rates drop. You're going to see gold and silver go up. You're going to see oil go up. You're going to see hyperinflation happen, especially once we get our exchange, our resets going. Um, you're going to see a lot of unhappy people and panicking and you're going to see, you know, I got a guy coming on next month who's a pretty smart economist as far as knowing, you know, statistician and statistical analysis. And he's showing me that we're in the melt up and the bust. And he said the, the crap's going to hit the fan in November. And that's exactly what happened 16 years ago. But now it's reverse engineered for our benefit. Yeah. But we're, we're the 1% or less. 99% of the population doesn't even know it's going to happen. Iraq's going to happen. And the whole world's going to be like, oh, well, that's cool. Good for them. Well, back to reality TV, yum, yum, you know, or, yeah, or yeah, what about this election? You know, it's the more distractions we have, the better that is for what we're, what we're waiting. And look at what's going on with distractions. We got political corruption. We got movie stars and the music industry being exposed. There's a lot of distractions out there, but if you've yep. got the intelligence to see through the mist, it's actually quite <laughs> clear what's going on. And I see yeah. it's just distraction. Yep. Well, mate, well, anything else you'd like to add? Yes, sir. I got to uh, take care of some proverbial business just to cover ourselves. Uh, if anybody, as you always say, is looking for currencies, uh, Dinar, Dong, Zim, Boulevard, the whole lot. We'll leave that link in the description. We also have a great relationship with a, a, a precious metals dealer that we we trust. I've bought from them before and had great success. So I've you know done it myself. We'll leave that link. And also, I don't normally do this, but we're not in normal times. Uh, Chris has come up with an initiative whereby he has created a personalized silver coin for me. And what we're doing is if anybody wants to buy one, they can. Now, now, hold on, folks. I don't really care about having my face on this. In fact, I was uncomfortable with it. The only reason I'm okay with it is because we have an initiative, a humanitarian initiative to pay it forward. So if somebody has enough silver, they don't need it. But let's say they have a friend in need. Anybody who buys a coin, we're going to get automatically put into a raffle. We're going to give away between five and 10 coins to the most people in most need, the elderly, people with disabilities, limited incomes, the like, who don't have any skin in the game. Those are the people we want to take care of first. I said to Chris, I'll do it on three conditions. One, that we can do a giveaway to pay it forward. Two, that it commemorates the season. And three, when I have my kids one day and they say, hey, what'd you do during this time? I could tell them, I could show them videos. But I think since I'm bequeathing to them precious metals as part of my legacy, it like would be it. a lot more meaningful. I want this to have... I promise you, this is not about my ego. Or I don't even like this stuff. I mean, doing this channel was, as you know, a sacrifice to God because I was comfortable behind the scenes. But, you know, the thing is, when we say yes to God and we're obedient, that's when blessings come. So I just said, if we're going to do this, let's make it practical. Let's let's give something back, right? And I don't really see any money of this. The, the, the proceeds was left go to cover the, the costs of the channel and the website and the maintenance and you know, all the stuff that we have to do, especially with inflation upticking. Uh, it's just to keep the ship going so we can bring out the good information, but let's make something good out. So if anybody is interested in doing that, we'll leave that link in the description as well. I'm a bit jealous. I'll have to come up with something don't, like- Mahoney. Don't be, it's Mahoney just my branded, face. Don't be that jealous. Mahoney, Mahoney branded ammunition 
on Mahoney branded whiskey. <laughs> not as good. I'm not as good looking as you. I don't have the accent as you. So uh, no, you don't need to be jealous, man. You've got a lot less kilometers on you as well, buddy. That's it. I'm feeling <laughs> it now. Actually, I'm pleased that we've got it through the hour because one stage I was like, oh, this is. I can feel it sweeping over me now. This uh, yeah, like a jet lag. But John, thanks so much. Thanks it's always great for the intel that you share with the audience, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you privately. If there is anything else that we um, feel that you need to share, you can get on John's Telegram channel. He's great at that. The posts go up sometimes twice or three, an hour. I've seen you post stuff. It just depends oh, what's happening. Like every 20 minutes now with everything going on. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. And we'll be back again in uh, in three, four weeks. Actually, we'll probably be back right about near close to election time. So let's see what's happening there. It's the 23rd to 22nd today now for me. Yep. But yeah, we'll be right back right before election. Exciting times, John. Thank you so much, mate. And Thank thanks you, for the invite. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye, folks. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye.